so many people lose the gift of the opportunity. The opportunity is not to look at your partner and point out all of their shortcomings. The opportunity is to look in the mirror and see how you're handling it. And one of the hugest things that we talk about is acceptance versus resistance. And if we, if I accept you, Brandon, for how you show up, then I'm, I'm engaging with what is. If instead I resist how you show, why can't you, why do you always have to like this full resistance now I can't engage with what's happening because I'm trying so hard to get you to be something that you're not. Mm -hmm. Once we're in acceptance, it's like, okay, I have a partner who is uh, an internal processor and I'm an external processor. I have a partner who was raised in a household with a lot of verbal abuse and they become verbally hostile toward me. I have a partner who blank, that's who they are right now. They may be doing their own work, but that's what I'm dealing with. And when, when you're in a relationship and you can accept that what is, is, and what's my part, how am I reacting to it? What am I afraid of? Um, how is it triggering me? What can I do about it? That's where the gold is. And to your point of every relationship doesn't last until death, Every relationship either ends in a lifetime together or a breakup. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity is during the relationship. I think Seinfeld said, I, you know, it's easy to be on your own. I'm the master of my own domain, right? It's like, whatever I say goes, nobody argues with me. Nobody leaves their dirty underwear on the floor, whatever the case may be. It's being in relationship when, when, when there is so much um, rich, fertile soil to to grow through. It, I say it that you're smashing two lives together. 99% of the time, that is not going to work. So breakups are not only normal, they're expected, statistically speaking, right? Statistically speaking, most people who get together will break up. But that doesn't mean that they always will. So the way that I look at it is this. I don't want to lament the breakup as much as I want to be hopeful that it never happens, right? And if it does, so be it. That's the reality of it because I think one of the things that's important to do when you're in a relationship is not keep the relationship alive for the relationship's sake. You you and your partner are both alive individuals who only have one life to live as so far has been proven yet. Um, so why would you sit there and try to protect something that you don't even value? Or so many people keep the marriage together for the children and mm. then you train your children that this unhealthy dysfunctional dance of quote unquote love is love so they're going to go out and look for the same thing yeah. so staying for the children staying because we're supposed to um doesn't work taking the opportunity to grow and learn i mean through every relationship whether you're 16 or you're 56, you enter a new relationship, there's going to be opportunity. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty when we can look at everything. There's a saying I learned when I was doing some of my own personal work. Um, uh, the author of the book, uh, The Presence Process was Michael Brown, is Michael Brown. And he says, every upset is a setup. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm upset, I am being set up to heal and refine myself. And if you think about that, most of us are raised is if I'm upset, there is either a person or a circumstances that's at fault. Mm -hmm. No, no. If I'm upset, there's an invitation for me to learn more about myself and to heal and refine. And when you just turn that around, it's like, bring the upsets on, bring them mm -hmm. on. Because every time I deal with an upset and I deal with it from that healthy perspective of in introspection, I'm better. I'm stronger. I'm, I'm more healed. I'm more whole. I'm more able to be in relationship. And what's the point? What's the point of us being here is to become the best version of ourselves that we can. And as odd as it sounds, I truly believe that 
I am not an advocate of divorce. I love working with people on mending their marriage. Uh, when you're facing divorce, whether it's your choice or your spouse's, uh, you can go in two heels dug in, fully resistant, angry. You could be angry 15 years later, or mm. you can shift to acceptance and use the pain of divorce to fuel your own personal growth. One of the things you said there at the end makes me think of this movie. And I want to be clear. I, I think I may have talked about this movie before on the podcast, uh, but it's not a good movie. It's the concept that I enjoy. The movie itself is not great, but it's a movie called Don John. Uh, it was written and directed, I believe, by Joseph Gordon-Lovett, and it also stars him um, opposite Scarlett Johansson. And the concept of the movie is that a real man will change for the woman he loves. And so that's the almost the entirety of what the movie is, is her trying to change who he is into who she wants him to be. And the concept of that's how we, we view relationships is changing our partner into what we want instead of, as you said before, accepting them for who they are. Because that's what, to me, that's what love becomes, right? I'm not saying you don't compromise in a relationship. I'm not saying you don't make changes and you constantly shift who you are as a person and who they are as a person. Like that happens, but you also have to be who you are. You can, I'm not coming into this relationship to suddenly become Brandon 2.0. I'm trying to evolve, certainly, but I'm not looking to change what I consider the core fundamentals of who I am. And I'm not looking to change the core fundamentals of who this person is. I want to actively allow this person to grow into who they want to be as well and value who they have been and who they will become as well. I, I wrote an article about acceptance and the title was, I love you, please change. <laughs> And that's what we do. And a lot of people, um, and I fall into that category in the past, uh, fall, fall in love with somebody's potential. It's very dangerous to do. Fall in love with some, well, it's like, I love you, please change. I love you. Now, if you would just, here, let me give you the list and let's start working on it. And so if you're falling in love with somebody's potential, take a big step back and say, if they remain fairly as they are, and to your point, right, there's all types of beliefs and um, there's a lot that comes with how a person shows up. If this is it, um, does that work for you? Mm. And if all of these different things have to change, and not that everyone doesn't tweak and evolve, but fall in love with someone's potential, and, and it's not even a person, fall in love with the potential of a job, or a business or anything, and you're setting yourself up for um, heartache and, and struggle. Exactly. I think that so often we do that. We look at the potential of what that could be. The only thing I ever look at in potential is the relationship itself, which takes two. And as long as they're both contributing to that potential of the relationship, I believe in that. But the person's potential, like, yes, I want an ambitious person or whatever, but if they just were who they were, is that going to be enough, as you said? Because that's realistically what they're bringing to the relationship and you cannot force them to be something. They're going to be who they are. Right. And so if you're starting to date somebody and, you know, a great question to ask um, somebody that you're meeting and interested in, ask them about their relationships. What's your relationship with your family? What's your relationship? What, 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 tell me about your past relationships. One of the things that like made me fall off my seat, I'm, I'm a relationship junkie. I have great friends. I have terrific relationships with my kids and my family of origin. I spent my entire life dating men who had no relationships. Now, one might say, well, that's a pretty big red flag. You must have seen that. I didn't. I didn't. Not until years after my divorce and my co coaching training and the work that I did that I started like writing about each person. And it's so, it's so interesting when you stop and you ask somebody about their relationships, you start to learn how they are in relationship. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't talk to my siblings. Oh, I never see my parents. I, and, and there's always a victim story that comes along with that. And so then you go, Oh, I am going to love this person to so much that they're going to get fixed. They're going to get healed. They're going to be <laughs> and, a broken and, puppy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you cannot love somebody into being different in relationship. So there's a saying when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Oh yes. Maya Angelou. Yeah. I love that. I love that saying because that's one of the things I go with um, 
I have a lot of female friends. I was raised in a household where I was the only man there. So because of that uh, steeping, if you will, I tend to align more with women and have uh, great relationships with them platonically. And so one of the things I've struggled with with many of my female friends is the men they date and not believing they are who they have shown them to be. And I always go back to that. I tell them that I'm like, how many times is he going to show you who he is before you believe him? Why do you think that you know better than reality? Because reality is showing that he does not care about you. He doesn't care about the relationship. He doesn't respect you, but you keep going back. Why is that? And and what's so fascinating is it comes back to that resistance. I want Mm -hmm. what I want and I believe I can make it happen. And acceptance the practice of acceptance i have learned is one of the most powerful practices because the only person that you have other than a young child the only person that any of us have any ability to control is ourselves and when we truly take all of our energy and focusing focus it on controlling ourselves, empowering ourselves, then beautiful things happen. But it's kind of like if you're out in the sea and you're on a sailboat and you have, and you have want to get from point A to B and you can either grab at this furious wind or you can grab at the sail, people always grab at the wind. And which is the other person or the circumstance, the sail is them. It's like, grab that sail because that's, that's where all the power really is. And then you feel confident and empowered because you've made the change. Thanks for checking out Starting Nowhere. Come find us on Facebook so you can comment on this and other clips and episodes of Starting Nowhere.